Strike. No one's saving those. What, what does it mean to you? Tony, I know your views and mm. opinions on yes. the level of grassroots and, and facilities, yes. etc. Yes. What does that money mean? And, and where do you think some of that money should be going? Uh, honestly, to me, it, it doesn't mean a great deal whatsoever because, unfortunately, the way it pans out, uh, the rich get richer, which is fair enough, and, and then we will, we will take the drops as they drop down the league. For me, ideally, this should be a prerequisite where a percentage of that money, a higher percentage, goes further down and it's a little bit more evenly distributed. Uh, especially with the fact that I think it's an average around 70% of a club's annual turnover at the top level is wages, yeah. which is great. The players deserve it because when you see academy football and see what players do, yeah. get themselves to the top of the game, they deserve every single penny. Yeah. They really, really do because they work hard for that for what they get. But, you know, a, a slightly fairer distribution would hopefully enable uh, grassroots moving up Mm. Into uh, into the academy system to help us develop better coaches and better players, and then everybody benefits. You know that would be my ideal scenario. Tony, okay. grass grassroots football. Um, what are your views on the current state? You know, everyone talks about. I'll put mm. it this way: at my mm. level, my team have only played twice since the first week in December. Yes. Um, you know, pitches are constantly getting called off. Yes. Uh, facilities yes. are not being kept up to a standard that no. we like to. When we're playing on pitches now, more often than not, we're playing on pitches that are either full of sand or full yes. of mud. Well, yeah, well, full of God knows what. Yeah, full of God knows yeah. You're right there, full of God knows what. Where do, <laughs> where do you think we are at the moment in this current state with this country? And are, are we still lagging behind and missing a trick from you know the likes of Holland, Spain, etc.? Yeah, I think so. I think so, because uh, what, what other countries have done, they've made a, a, a concise effort to, to invest in facility uh, and, you know, uh, and, and, and things, you know, and equipment and, and logistics at the grassroots level uh, and, and have, have reaped the rewards over a period of years. But uh, they've done that by investing and, and dipping a toe in the water and taking a punt. And I think that's what we need to do now. A lot of people talk about it. A lot of people have got some great ideas. And some great, great, great work being done. But I think we really now have to make a, a considered effort to really invest in it and sow those seeds so that we can really reap the rewards moving forward for generations to come, definitely. Can we get there, Tony? Difficult yes, question, absolutely. I know. Yep. Ab absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. We have to think that, and I honestly think that, because we have to have something to aspire to. Because if we don't, then we stagnate, the grass grows, and we start to flatline. We have to believe that, and I totally believe that, yes, things will improve. So in, in terms of uh, a number of people now that are getting behind various campaigns towards grassroots football in terms yep. of trying to get more funding, mon money, trying yep. to get more yeah, facilities, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. are you an advocate of that? Are you an advocate Massively. of campaigning? Or Massively. do you feel that, you know, things should just happen as they happen? No, 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 no. You have to, I mean, like with me and my coaching journey, you know, if you sit there and wait for things to happen, nothing will happen. Mm. Unless you get very, very fortunate. You have to push. Push your lock doors. You have to keep asking. You have to keep banging the drum. You yeah. have to make people listen sometimes. Yeah. You have to really, really push it and, and, and sell it to them and make them believe it. Uh, and, that has to, and that's tough. And that's tough because sometimes you feel like you're fighting a losing battle. But you, you've really got to dig in. And if you believe in it fully and totally, then you can make it happen without that. Tony, last question, but a tricky one. Yep. Um, yep. Where do you think we'll be in 10 years' time in terms of development of, of, of talented players, um, yep. in terms of, of English football in general, yep. and that whole process of the negative yep. stuff that we're talking about, not the right yep. facilities, etc. cetera. Where, yep. where do you think we, we could be, or where would you like us to be in, in 10 years' think, time? Obviously, ideally, we'd like to be high, a lot higher up uh, the, 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 the chain, if you like, than we are at the minute. But I honestly think we will be. I, you know, in 10 years, I would look to uh, at least a 25% to 30% improvement on where we are. So that's more facilities, a bigger player pool, a bigger coaching pool. Yeah. And then everybody benefits moving forward across. Because it's one game. It's one game. It's not, it shouldn't be fragmented. It shouldn't be split. We should all be under uh, the one umbrella of the beautiful game for me. And that's what we've got to aspire to. Uh, but it, does it have an impact on, on, on us as a, as a, as a first-team group? Not mm. really, it doesn't, right. no. Right. Well, you know, you can look at it in, in another way and say, well, our young first-year scholar, would he have come through yeah. if the funding wouldn't have been there? Okay. So, you know, it's, it's, it swings and roundabouts, I guess. But in terms of direct funding, no, a very little impact on us. Where are we then in this country in terms of, you know, everyone's 
and I'm one of the biggest advocates shouting now about the facilities at grassroots level and, um, you know, are we producing enough players? You know, your story about getting a player from Wagamama's, that, for me, that should be in the front page of every footballing paper. Where are we now in terms of producing players, but also giving the young players the right facilities to play on? Because we're not where the Germans are, we're not where the Dutch are, we're not where the Spanish What are we missing? I think facilities is a big, big thing, mm. Troy. I think, you know, we need to really look at our facilities. I think it's key. I actually think we've got some excellent football players in this country. I do. I really do believe that. And I think we've got some really good young coaches yeah. and young managers who, you know, I think we do ourselves a disservice at times. But you look at, you know, certainly on the interna international scene, the young 16, 17, 18 year olds, we're winning tournaments. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. And, you know, but where do they go once they finish their 18, where's the games program, where's the uh, teams for them to play and I think we're trying to address it but I think from grassroots, you know, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of playing football on the street, playing, yeah. in, playing in the cages. The good old days. Yeah, yeah. Play, yeah. you know, we don't see that enough anymore, mm. you know, and we've had all this wonderful coaching and we do have wonderful coaching, how much better are the players today, mm. Mm. you know, so I think we need facilities, for sure. I think we need, you know, where's all our dribblers? Yeah. I know you know a few, but, yeah, you know. Just slightly, yeah, just slightly. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, like, the, the, why are we not producing players such as, you know, the likes of Messi and Ronaldo and mm. Neymar? I know they're the best players in the world. Why are we not producing? Well, England can produce those players. That's I believe they can, yeah. you know. Is it, you know, is it the fear of players not retaining the ball, mm. you know, is mm. you know, is it fear of, you know, losing football matches? But when you think about the Premier League and the Premier League, the, the the ball gets rolled over, and I know we talk about retaining the ball, but the ball gets rolled over quite a lot of times. Premier League is end to end. The reason it's end to end is because the ball is actually given away a lot, isn't <laughs> yeah. it? Which means that the other team can then get on it and get down the other end. So, yeah. you know, uh, and uh, you know, there's a high percentage of foreign players in the Premier League that also lose possession of the ball mm. quite a lot. So. Is it a fact that we're not giving our youngsters the opportunity to go and do that or are they criticised too early where we're allowing more established players to get away with it? I, I'm not quite I, sure I, what the I, answer I, is. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't believe enough clubs give these young players the opportunity. I don't. I think that, you know, if we have... As, has the foreign, the foreign players uh, enhanced the Premiership? A hundred percent Of course, has. yeah. It has. But that doesn't help our young British players. Now, do I think that there's ability and talent? Yes, I do. But, you know, if people are not going to give them an opportunity, then we're never going to see it. Mm. We're never going to see it. And I do think it's out there. I do. I really do believe. Because I look at some of these young British players, these young English players, they've got some amazing talent, amazing mm. ability. You know, it's, they've got wonderful, wonderful skills. Is that nurtured? Is that taking them down the right path? Right, Are okay. they given the right opportunities? I don't know. Strike, no one's saving those.